Welcome back to Beards and Brews Movie Reviews, where we watch a movie and then we drink about it. This week's movie is going to be Gremlins 2 The New Batch, starring myself, Eric. I'm Brady. And I'm Chandler. We're going to tell you why this movie is a step up from Critters 2 and many step ups from The Munchies 2. What the hell is a Munchie? Yeah, so this movie starts with that Warner Brothers classic logo and intro, you know, with Bug Bunny. Daffy Duck. Da, 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 da. I legitimately thought that was a commercial. I forgot that was in the beginning of this movie. I thought it was like, oh, okay, Amazon just playing me a wacky commercial. Thanks, Amazon. Yeah, it's it's coming on, and the wife looks over at me and goes, I don't remember it starting like this. And I went, yep, it totally does, because they want you to watch their cartoons, too. Just gotta watch them. You know, that's going to happen a lot. There's going to be like, well, I don't remember that. This whole thing is like a Mandela effect. Like, I don't remember, like, hardly anything from this movie except from a few things in Hulkamania. Well, luckily for me, this was my first time, as is most of the time. Uh, so I didn't have anything to cloud my memory, really. I got all of this crystal clear. <laughs> we get treated to the, uh, the skyline of New York and a rude limo driver who is fucking nearly running over everyone in the street <laughs> uh, the music cues in and it's that classic if we are going somewhere from the far east we are going to play this style music yeah. just to show you that we are there um, it's not the 80s without any casual racism towards the Chinese absolutely look no, at it, you short round it was, uh, it was acceptable at the time so the fellow that steps out of this limo, he's he's straight out of like a Dick Tracy villain. When he steps out, his hair just looks like an anvil. It's bad. It's like comic book Wall Street stuff. Yeah. He won't even step on the actual street because the street is dirty. He has to step further over away from the filth. You earth. He goes into the little shop of I can't remember the fellow's name. He's the Chinese guy. Wow. Okay. He goes into the Chinese guy's shop. I mean... He's got a name, sir. Mr. Wayne. Okay? His name is Mr. Wayne. Is it really? <laughs> yes, it is. Make actually. that up. All right. No. Maybe it's Wang? <laughs> I, well, could have been, I, I was going to say it could have been a lot worse, but it, it's already worse. <laughs> Yeah, I just casually wrote it down and sound like it sounded like it said Mr. Wayne. Man, I'm learning every day, guys. Uh, Gizmo is in his little cage doing his thing, being adorable. If you guys haven't seen Gremlins 1 or have who Gremlins, you know, is, is all about, it's Gizmo. He is the adorable, fuzzy little fella that even at the end of this film they are plugging him hard like i see him with suction cups hanging in windows no merchandising had one of those i had it oh yeah our window i loved it he was adorable <laughs> the gremlin's flamethrower can't leave home without it exactly uh he's doing his little song the guy comes in and he has a vcr and a tv combo set up ready to roll he puts in a pre-recorded video threat and we just did robocop where there was yet again yeah. a pre-recorded video threat i was thinking i was thinking the same thing like man this is gonna be nasty but he was actually kind of pleasant yeah <laughs> it didn't turn into the uh god what was the hang on His i mean mom. that dude totally has like that dude that dude totally has like gary Busey teeth though i'm gonna throw that out there Oh, yeah. He, if Gary Busey could have been in that role, yes. So, you know, you said you were expecting it to be worse, but he was kind of pleasant. I was thinking it would have been like that Dick Jones, I'm Dick Jones kind of thing where he goes, you should be on your knees right about now, and Clarence Boddicker walks in and shoots Mr. Wayne in the legs or something. <laughs> Red Foreman, no. Yeah, and then we get, again, that racism... Who said that? Confucius or Bruce Lee? You know, that's the only two people of any type of descent that may have said something important, I suppose. After that line, I totally had to, like, look around, just, like, look over my shoulder, like, oof. Yeah. 1989, guys, or whenever this was made. 90. 
So the fella leaves. He's like, keep the TV. Slams down the remote. Gizmo reaches over, pokes a button. Na na na. Rumble. First Blood Part Two. <laughs> He's just sitting there. Mm, Gizmo. It's a day of Rambo. It's a day of HBO. Product placement. <laughs> and <laughs> it's too freaking cute, man. It's too freaking cute. We cut to six weeks later to the uh, automated clamp building, which is its symbols like a smushed earth in a clamp of a sea, and the TV exposition of Mr. Wayne's death. They were waiting for him to die because he had a cough, so I guess he had pneumonia or something. He didn't. He's got that tuberculosis. Always comes back to Tombstone. And so Gizmo has to get out of there. They're tearing the building down. And again, if you guys don't know who Gizmo is, if you guys have not seen Gremlins, this thing is the epitome of fucking adorable. And he's in the little street, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, trying to run. And he's just running towards the screen and running down a street, you know, the street in broad daylight, which should kill him. Uh, but he's so cute. And then this fellow's like, oh, look, there's something on the ground. Let me scoop it up. And, you know, whatever. Grabs him up. Yeah, like that dude that grabbed him up. Who was that guy? You don't see him ever again. Uh, actually, you do. You see him inside of the genetics lab. He is one of the twins. Oh, oh it's that okay. guy. Yeah, he's the security guard from Terminator 2. There you go. Uh, we cut then, after Gizmo gets scooped up, to Billy and his woman, Kate, crossing the street. And Catching up with the dude. Exactly. And they're just doing their thing, walking across the street talking about how he wants a promotion, the American dream, and all I could focus on was how good that fucking Whopper looked on the billboard. <laughs> this movie's filled all with kind, a lot of that stuff. All kinds of product placement. Yeah. Oh yeah, when, especially when shit goes down, there's be a lot of Reebok in the background. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he's chasing the American dream, and we're introduced to Warner Brothers gag number one, the revolving door. <laughs> yeah, like this guy tries to get it in the building. Not only does he, like, knock Kate out of the way, he gets stuck in the door, spun around like some kind of, like, chopping machine, thrown out, and right into another woman. It's a, it's a hot mess, and it's very, very childish. It was really kind of a mess for me, because every so often I would just write, chaos in, in, ensues. Just yeah, like, that's just... It happens. <laughs> I wrote that down. <laughs> uh, during the bedlam, you know, just... <laughs> I like uh, I like how your notes just turn into a bumper sticker just like yeah shit happens <laughs> yeah so Billy is hoping that someone's gonna notice how good he is at his job you know that he should be appreciated much like Johnny from the room starring Tommy Wiseau <laughs> uh, but now they are both the fool uh, Billy has a potted plant at his desk and apparently this sets off alarms. So one of the guys comes by and he goes, uh, with his little scanny stick thing. Just scans a guy's name and it tells you Billy's name. Billy Futterman or Fuddruckers or whatever, Feltzer. <laughs> hey, William Feltzer. And he's like, hey, it's that guy, William Fazoli's. <laughs> hey, look, it's Bill Fazoles. This dude's biggest concern is that his potted plant is going to get an aphid infestation. And he goes, if everybody has a little potted plant or a little something from home, it's going to look like a $200 million flea market in here. Can't have everybody bring in personality and shit. At least he had the, I guess, charm to throw away the plant, but leave the little drawing that he had of his hometown Hill Valley. I mean, uh, whatever that was. He even makes fun of it, saying, oh, well, we got real art over here, and it's literally a triangle and a circle, one red, one blue, on a white background. I feel like that's anybody who walks into a real art exhibit. It's just like, yeah, I could have done that. Yes. We get introduced to Marla, and she is the semi-attractive... Smoking, noir, shoulder pad lady. <laughs> we got new shoulder pad rolled cigarettes. Yeah, just minus the self-rolled cigarettes, she is, you know, chick from Blade Runner. But this lady's 
accent just makes me want to sock her in the nose. I just can't stand it. I don't think I could live in New York and deal with somebody who spoke that way. I was going to say, if you live in New York, everybody speaks that way. <laughs> there were several times in this film where she spoke, and I thought about rewinding it to see what she was saying, and then I talked myself out of it and said, nah, you know what? I don't care. Gibberish. And I wrote that as my notes. <laughs> she speaks New York gibberish to Billy. Uh, we see her light up a cigarette to release her stress as she's talking to Billy, and uh, the big wig walks away. Moments later, we see a man get fired for taking a smoke break. That's a little bit of a cameo. I don't know who that guy is, but I've seen him in a ton of stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, the, um, he's the CEO of the Biodome. In, uh, well, unfortunately, Biodome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Billy's lady, she works there, too, and she gives tours. Kate. And she's given, like, this little tour, and there's a fellow taking all these pictures. And we're introduced to... Dracula, but Vampire Fred. Yeah, poor Grandpa Munster. Absolutely. <laughs> he, I guess he wasn't doing anything else. You know, the Munsters had been canceled for probably 62 years at this point. <laughs> 62 years? <laughs> you gotta make a living. It's true. I mean, I mean, at some point you gotta go from sucking blood to sucking dick to make your rent. <laughs> $20 is $20, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad for him. Uh, he has the best line, hands down, of the entire film, if you want to laugh about something, though. He's talking about his time slot, which is at 5 a.m., and he goes, No one who watches this show is afraid of the Wolfman. The only thing that scares them is getting sober and finding work. <laughs> That's good. I thought that was beautiful. Uh, he then goes on to explain his hopes and dreams of being something more. He wants to be a uh, anchor man. And we get foreshadowing of the Gremlins with Igor the Puppet, which is clearly a really, really, really cheesy mock-up of one of these Gremlin characters as a hand puppet. Yeah, it looked like Spike from the first one. I thought this yes. is what they were going for. I was just like, huh, clever? There, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that really is cool, it's clever, it's smart, but it's drowned out with so much fucking droll nonsense that it doesn't have the feel of the first one, yet when it has those wacky moments, they're so good. And You know what? This movie does feel like a huge meat grinder with a little bit of spice sprinkled in. There's just, yes. there's so much garbage in between, though. There is a meat grinder later. Or actually, I think it's a paper shredder. But a yeah, paper shredder. Uh, Fred expositions some story out for us about the genetic lab work upstairs and how they have patented a new species of gerbil. Ooh, that sounds interesting. I'm sure you would find that interesting. <laughs> Maybe that <laughs> gerbil could be your new huckleberry. Ring, ring, who's that? Richard Gere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he could sue us. Uh, <laughs> uh, so right after they speak about it we cut to the lab and it's got a really cute little name it's called Splice of Life we cut to Christopher Lee oh in... no Dr. Catheter yeah, yeah we got fucking Christopher Lee in here yeah as soon as I saw him I was just like oh no <laughs> just to flush the toilet potential character just wasted here so he shows up and he's waiting on a delivery what is he waiting on malaria the man is waiting on malaria to be delivered to him he gets upset because what is delivered instead is bomp bomp rabies it's okay because he's gonna get the flu later that week yeah <laughs> and then the lady sneezes in a very very cheesy. This is this is uh, gag number two, ladies and gentlemen, from the cartoon gags. Uh, she's sneezing all this snot. He sees all the snot. He wants the snot. We uh, we then cut to the twins working on cloning, which is I thought as a sight gag, pretty funny. How the, how's the cloning going? One of the twins steps up, goes, 
it's going good in unison with the other twin who then the camera pans out and shows it's like oh are they clones are they twins nobody knows nobody cares is one of them the t-1000 who knows (laughs) so they introduce gizmo to christopher lee's character and boy, oh boy, are we treated to another stupid, cute dance sequence. He's dancing to some classic rock. And I can't lie, I was pretty into the song my damn self. But you know who wasn't? Poor Christopher Lee. He probably didn't know what music was at that point. <laughs> oh, shit. So, he's sitting there, and he's watching this. There's no way not to be entertained. This thing is beyond adorable. Truly. And it's dancing and it's doing this thing and he tries to make a, you know, make a, uh, and make a dash for it. Christopher Lee has none of it and snatches him up. Yeah, he brings down the hammer. Wink. wink. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Billy hears the delivery dude uh, humming Gizmo's little Mogwai tune, which is his thing all through the movie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he rescues him from the lab. I cannot, can we address how like ridiculously easy he got into that place? It's exactly <laughs> how Arnold Schwarzenegger like um, snuck into that place with just a hard hat and a toolbox. But he just had the toolbox like, hey guys, uh, your thing's broken. Yeah, it's back there. Do 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 do. I had to get through all the top clearance with this <laughs> box. Gotta just, yep, okay, and just walks on in. Yeah, it's like, uh, hey, look, a distraction. Oh, really? Look at the version! Insert New York gibberish. We get a bathroom reunion scene with, again, a stupid, cute gizmo. He's getting pets on his little head, and fuck, it made me want to just be there petting that little gizmo. I wanted to hold him and be like, oh, you're so adorable. (laughs) So cute, you just want to punch him in the face. Yeah, like, oh, you're so cute. Let me just murder everybody and put your little head on him. Look at you, just dance in their blood. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Billy sneaks him out of there and decides that he's going to keep him in his file cabinet because, hey, you don't want him to get caught at work because the dude got fired for smoking. What are they going to do when they catch you with some kind of hybrid creature? Unknown Damn. to him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is where we get cartoon gag number three. Billy goes to close the uh, drawer and he closes poor little Gizmo's hand in there. Blump, and he goes, oh no, I'm sorry. And he opens it back up. And his little hand, boom, 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 is visually pulsing larger to smaller, just like it would in a cartoon. You got to feel for the little guy. He's so small and cute. I mean, you basically, if you weren't paying attention, you could kick him across the room like a soccer ball. <laughs> Billy finally gets recognized by his, uh, his boss, the, the, the top of the food chain, Mr. Clamp himself. Yay! You and go Clamp. No, give him the clamps, Futurama. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Marla begins to speak to Billy. And I have no fucking clue what she says. Not a clue. go to this Canadian restaurant. They clean your fish right at the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Is she in the room? <laughs> uh, so, she really, air quotes, turns on the charm while Gizmo adorably breaks out of the uh, filing cabinet where he pushes it open, tosses out a rope made of paper clips and struggles with all these cute little humming noises and stuff as he crawls out. Uh, Billy informs Kate that she needs to take Gizmo home and she ain't about that life at all. She totally wasn't into it. I mean, like, you find out later on where she didn't even realize or remember what he looked like. Yeah, not a clue. She just knows that this thing is a pain in the ass and she doesn't want it. But she loves her man, so she bites the bullet. He makes sure to go over the rules of the Mogwai with her. Of course, rule number one, bright light will kill them. Number two, don't get them wet. Because they'll spawn little babies out of their back. Uh, rule number three, don't feed them after midnight because apparently they turn into a caterpillar, form a cocoon, and when the cocoon hatches, 
they turn into bloodthirsty, maniacal creatures. I don't know about you guys, but I am curious as to what Gizmo would turn into. They seem to keep their personality traits from when they transform from the cute little furry thing into the murderous green thing. They just get a little bit more like Wolverine into them or something. Yeah, I mean, would Gizmo just still be humming and fucking stupid adorable, but, you know, able to kill? We'll just have to find out in Gremlins 3, Hawaiian Vacation. Starring Fester Adams. Nah, not Fester Adams, but we do get a cameo by Gomez Adams. Eh? (laughs) Anybody else catch that? I did. He has to fix the water fountain, and uh uh-oh, surprise, surprise, surprise. Water shoots, water shoots, water shoots, water shoots across the fucking room, lands on a uh, table, and what are those devices called where, you know, the boot kicks the ball, the ball rolls down? No, Rube Goldberg inventions. Oh, yeah. Yes. It is basically a Rube Goldberg invention of the water getting to Gizmo. But it gets him, and he starts pooping out those little fur balls. And holy shit, if Spike isn't even cuter than Gizmo. He is like the punk rock version of Gizmo, and he comes crawling out of a trash can, and he looks fucking awesome. So in the first one, is the is the biology of how all this happens, is that covered? Because I'm really out of the loop here. Well, the thing well, is, see, um, <laughs> it works. Oh, okay. <laughs> you see, there's water and semen, son. <laughs> M- movie's got a movie. <laughs> so, Fair enough. each one of these balls that pop out of him, in the original film, they were just murderous. And what made, you know, Stripe different is that he had a stripe. That was it. Stripe, that's it. I kept calling him Spike. I get him confused. Those darn acids. So what made him different was one had a stripe, but was just as crazy as all the other. He, he, you know, he was just as mean, everything. He didn't have anything that made him really different other than the stripe. In this one, he comes out just ready to be the ringleader. He is clearly in charge from the get-go, and the rest of these fellas have little Warner Brothers personas used in the cartoons. You get uh, uh, the Daffy Duck type crazy one. You get a little mobster one like meh, meh, see? They're just clearly cartoon references used by Warner Brothers. And don't get me wrong, for marketing, it's a smart ploy. You're right, they have everything to the point where you even see a gargoyle. So it's just like a wild bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. They gang up on Gizmo immediately and somehow know his name maybe through genetic memory Ooh, fancy they t- yeah they toss him into an air duct while the daffy duck mogwai which looks very much like gizmo but he's like <laughs> just fucking going crazy with his holy <laughs> eyes so he gets mistaken for gizmo in a king kong reference he's on top of this little building there's little airplanes and he's up there like <laughs> smacking at him and clueless Cade just like oh yeah that's totally him whatever shoves yeah. the person. <laughs> shoves just in the purse and gizmo who is shown to be able to speak to be able to sing sits eight to ten feet away inside of an air duct and like oh no oh i'm so sad but he is fucking adorably sad oh my god i just want to fucking break his legs so he always looks sad <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I but guess. he doesn't use that oh what i was just saying i mean i guess if you break his legs he'll always look sad uh we get the naughty mogwais they're all banded together like a fucking group from saved by the bell and what are they gonna do they're gonna go be naughty while uh Marla tries to get... Yeah, buddy. So they're out being naughty, and Marla is trying to get naughty with Billy. Hashtag Jolt Cola. Just right there on the table. Yep. Right there for you. Uh, We get a scene where Marla, I guess, isn't being blunt enough, and just foot in the crotch. That's what happens in all Canadian cuisine restaurants, to be honest. I'm your Mountie waiter. I'm delivering your chocolate mousse, eh? Oh, you got your foot in his crotch. I see you enjoying yourselves. (laughs) Like, Does this count you know, Tim Hortons? <laughs> I mean, the scene is whatever, but that guy has one of the best lines. Like, after Billy just takes off after being weirded out having a foot on his dick, the guy, the uh, the waiter's just like, hey, how about some horn? 
Yeah, <laughs> just wanna, you want a slice of this moose, eh? <laughs> just <laughs> oh Canada. I see what you did there. Shout out to the red, white, and leaf. <laughs> so next we get gag number four. Uh, Kate has taken fake Gizmo home, and she's trying to feed him. He gets the corn, and just like in any good cartoon, bzzz, like a buzzsaw, just back and forth, up and down on it. Speed eats this thing of corn. And then, man, he turns into a little asshole, but is he adorably an asshole? He is throwing hostess cupcakes. Hey, he's throwing all this stuff at the lady and she is a fucking hot mess her dress or not her dress i'm sorry her blouse is covered in just everything that she tried to give this little guy and his belly is all distended and popped out he's clearly been eating a ton of shit all that jello pudding (laughs) yeah he's so adorable and he's just like (laughs) just eating and this was one of the (laughs) bits is when they pick him up to try to take him back she, he's like no you got the wrong fucking gremlin we gotta take this thing back yeah i love how like surprised but not surprised he was like she does yeah. this all the fucking time just like him like shit he's like, it's okay gizmo <laughs> what the fuck kate <laughs> <laughs> like it's just a tuesday you performed the wrong fucking gremlin <laughs> so she picks this, or he picks it up to take it back, and it's just going fucking nuts in his hands. Its little arms, its little legs are just flailing, and his head's like twisting back and forth, and his ears are wiggling. Its fur is all just fluffing all crazy, and the whole time it's got that maniacal <laughs> laughing going on. I totally thought Billy was going to lose a finger. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but the Gremlins, all through this film, is something else I noticed too. Uh, the, the Gremlins save Billy on multiple occasions. Even whenever they are full-fledged monsters, they still save Billy. He just has that savable face. Uh, so, they're trying to get him out of here, and then there's a knock on the door, and it's the, the fucking Buttermans, or the Futtermans. It's fucking Dick Miller, back from the dead, that's who it is. After yeah. he gets run over by his own fucking plow from the first movie, he just shows up in one piece. Now, this movie doesn't give me the music that I wanted from the original. That da 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 That's just, that's the Gremlin, man. I was going to say, it's Warner Brothers. They probably didn't want to sue themselves. Nah, fair enough. So... He's got this little fucking gremlin that's going nuts, and he wants to hide it from the Futterman, so he stuffs it in the purse. He's like, look, man, if you want to make it out of this, you better be quiet. And he goes, all right. <laughs> he's just, <laughs> he's like, all right, and, you know, whatever. Because he knows if he fucks up, he's going to wind up in the blender. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go bad. I mean, Billy don't need to keep this fucker around. He's got no qualms with killing these things. He did in the last film. He'll do it again. So the Futtermans come in, and they're like, oh, we came in early whatever no one cares these are just tossed in characters that i could have lived without completely uh i think the joke was like this movie isn't supposed to make sense like those two totally died in the first movie but they're just back because whatever just fuck continuity whatever well i think again it's trying to be a lot more child friendly so it brought them back to be like oh they're not dead look they survived but he's got some really good lines about commies and weird foreign bugs. <laughs> he had a lot more to say about those foreign bugs in the first movie. I'll tell you that one. How <laughs> fuck yeah, he did. Uh, he also mentions that Billy's father, who is an inventor, but he only makes weird shit. He, shit he that is, doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. His newest invention, which really, really made me happy, was reversible toilet paper. <laughs> Oh, man. Like, I caught that little bit as he's going out the door, and I, I let out a little chuckle. I was like, all right, that's good. Uh, we then cut to the naughty Mogwais, and we get a scene of one of the goofy ones, who, and he is wheezing the juice. No, Pauly Shore style. He is underneath of this uh, Froyo machine, and one of them has the lever pulled down, and there's just yogurt filling up this adorable little furry creature and its belly is just growing and growing and growing until 
you see the yogurt has nowhere else to go and it's just overflowing onto the creature's face. And this is where the movie really starts to pick up the pace, go off the rails. Go completely off the rails, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because, like, there's already a gremlin inside the toppings. Like, how did he get there? He's just, like, reaching up trying to squeeze a banana. Yeah, he's like, ah. (laughs) It's fucking adorable. He's like, oh my god, you got rats. Ah." Not rats. (laughs) There's no, 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 no. She said there's no rats. Billy thinks that, you know, What's the best solution? These guys can only turn bad, bad if they get wet. So he wants to break in and cut the main water main. Let me try that again. Billy wants to break in and disable the water main. And when he's doing this, he's got a fire axe and a security guard runs up on him with a gun. And he is rescued by the crazy Magua. It jumps up and bites the security guard on the nose and then runs off. <laughs> Daffy Duck style down a hallway where all you see is this little shadow, which again is fucking adorable. <laughs> now these creatures have eaten. This guy has ran away. They arrest uh, Billy for you know using a fire axe and breaking into company property. Yada yada yada. Pans up to let you know that the movie is in fact still moving and there's eggs. Uh oh. Bum bum bum. Billy gets arrested and bailed out immediately. And we are treated to a paddy wagon of mimes. Oh my god. That's the one note that I actually took down. It's just They must have committed some mime crimes. <laughs> what? <laughs> mime crimes. I mean, does that mean they just act it out and don't really do it? He's got an invisible gun. Uh, <laughs> it then cut to the eggs hatching. And, man, oh, man, the effects here are on point. The eggs look super cool. These things are uh, nasty. Yes, they are. They would made a phenomenal job of it. Uh, there's a scene later, whenever the gremlins get taken care of, that kind of thing, where the main talking gremlin dies. And whenever he dies, it's fucking gross. It's visceral. It is something right up there with... Uh, you know, a Friday the Thirteenth film, but it's really in a fucking gnarly. I would put it up there as gooey. <laughs> yes, but these effects—they're—they're they're off off the charts. It's really cool, and we get to know that Spike is one of these, or not Spike, Jesus. Stripe is one of these uh, gremlins that are hatching because the spines on his back, paching, shoot out. He now has spikes. Uh, we then cut to Gizmo in a air duck and he goes echo oh, oh. and again it's adorable we cut to gag number five a zany cartoon fall where he falls down this air duct bangs all over the thing hits a bunch of pipes crashes on the ground and sets up like nothing ever happened but he doesn't take it lightly he starts pumping iron <laughs> not yet good sir uh Stripe reaches down and picks him up because, you know, after all this, he falls right in front of them. Stripe picks him up and calls him Gizmo Kaka. You know, Kaka is shit or whatever. Runs around gearing up with all these flashlights and all these things while Gizmo is being tortured. Then he started pumping iron. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it started bumping iron. <laughs> <laughs> Just, oh. uh, we then get a scene where Kate meets Marla in this weird, unnecessary side plot love triangle thing that no one gives a shit about. I know I don't. And we it's get totally treated. Killer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, but it doesn't need to be. The movie's too fucking long as it is. Well, there's no arc in this movie. It's just like stuff, 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 stuff. It ends. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's an hour and 40 minutes of just too much. It could have been an hour 20 and been an enjoyable, just action-filled romp of just, here you go, kids, sit down, eat some popcorn, laugh, you'll be fine. Hey, kids, here's a gremlin exposing himself for an hour 20 minutes. <laughs> just rubbing his grim junk. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the screen. <laughs> Deep eye contact. <laughs> But now we are treated to 
one of my favorite set pieces in this entire movie. Uh, we get Microwave with Marge, which is one of the shows that they're filming right there in the Clamp Studios. Uh, we are introduced to Marge, this older lady, and her introduction is she is making a dish of bologna and beans. Mm. I love this. The bologna and beans reference just immediately, as soon as I heard it, light bulb went up in my head. I was like, holy shit, that's What's what Earl made in Tremors. Oh, yeah. He was like, I made breakfast yesterday. He goes, the hell you did? I made eggs. He goes, nuh-uh. It was bologna and beans. <laughs> it's just, actually it was Val who said bologna and beans, so I'm sorry. That's such a, like, a tiny reference. I wonder like what other stuff we missed. There's probably like a fuck ton of this stuff in here somewhere. Stepped into the crevices of this movie. Yeah. So, like, uh... No, go ahead. No, no, it was like Batman symbol. Then they started pumping iron. <laughs> then they st- what? Uh, <laughs> she's in there making these dishes, and then it cuts to Billy, who's trying to warn everybody up in the control center that these gremlins are going to break loose, yada, yada, yada. A lot more filler, a lot more of a set display that we don't need to see. But again, Billy is being made fun of. He is being bullied. Billy is going to be ushered out and arrested again until he is saved by Stripe. Stripe busts through one of these uh, computer monitors and literally knocks a dude out with a straight right. Just, bap, nails him. <laughs> Eric, your notes are awful, sir. I meant to go back to the mimes. Oh, that's what I was going to say. It's because they committed mime crimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> they started pumping iron. <laughs> he started, that's when Gizmo started pumping iron. No. I think... I might have skipped some. Like, I've got some some parts where I've taken a lot of notes, and then there's gaps where just shit's happening where I don't really have a whole lot of notes at all. Yeah. And like I can only say pumping I, iron so many times. The next <laughs> thing that I have is, like, me questioning, are they dying or metamorphosing? I don't know what's going on, but they put a, a mouse trap in her sandwich. Like, these things have jokes. <laughs> this is a movie. <laughs> For the most part. Did you hate this again? I didn't hate it. I just didn't... I don't remember it being so fucking stupid. <laughs> like, there's so much garbage happening, like, all the time. I'm just like, what? Who? Is that fucking Count Dooku? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Count Dooku. So, after this straight punch, blap, that Stripe just knocks this human out with, we cut to Marge and she is back on her cooking show and she is getting trashed on Sherry Sherry is a <laughs> cooking wine but she is drinking it straight from the bottle because why wouldn't you there's just one for you two for me there you, it's it's literally that no joke it is literally that she's like I put a little bit in the food I dump a little bit down my gullet speaking of dumping alcohol down gullets well, tonight I've remote. got uh, New Belgium's Honey Orange Trapel. It's a uh, it's a Belgian Abbey Triple. It's a ten percent alcohol by volume, so it's it's pretty beefy. Um, but it's got Where's a pretty that? it's got a pretty light flavor to it. Little delicate orange aroma, yeasty uh, the the wheat esters that you would get from beefy hate, yeasty beer. Yeah, I hate. <laughs> The uh, the describing word yeasty, it makes me not want to have it anywhere near or around my mouth. <laughs> I mean, because it's so strong, you could call it a yeasty beastie. Just gag a little bit. I tried to review a uh, Angry Orchard rosé. It was made with these rare apples. I had the bottle in there a little bit ago. I don't remember the alcohol by volume because I took two drinks of that shit and threw it in the trash. I was like, fuck this. Bold and brash belongs in the trash. Yeah, I was not a fan. It it tasted like fragrance, like perfume. It literally, as soon as oh, I drank... that's the worst. Yeah. I don't want to feel like I'm drinking a candle. Yeah, it was bad. I, I could not get into it. I, I, I tried to get that second drink just to have it in there to be, you know, 
maybe I can get some floral notes and maybe describe this apple. It was gross. I took the second drink. I said, fuck this. Do it in the trash. Pour me a little bit of a uh, little bit of Jack down that. And I was like, good to go. Brady, what are you drinking tonight? Just bath and body works. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to keep it classy, I tried to uh, try some wine by uh, West Virginia Fruit and Berry. This is their uh, luscious cherry blossom. Oh, yeah, my review. <clears throat> uh, it's good. I like how oh. you're just it's, it's good. So, speaking of pouring it out, uh, Marge would have none of that because while these guys are trashing her set, she makes sure to save her sherry. She goes back for it. You see her running <laughs> out. It's in her fucking arms, cradled like a baby. Priorities, man. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So these gremlins, not even, you know, Stripe, it's the mob gremlin leading the rest of the uh, goofy gremlins. And they throw a bunch of stuff inside of a microwave to trigger a gigantic explosion, which triggers the uh, sprinkler system. Water sprays everywhere, and they start having back knee babies in a really, (laughs) really gross scene. Ooh, that that sounded disgusting. Just back me. Yeah, it's like they've been juicing for weeks and they're just, uh, just fucking lifting, bro. And that's when he started pumping iron. <laughs> just about, sir. Just about. We're almost there. <laughs> that's his one note. <laughs> and then he started pumping iron. He said lifting. I was just like, finally, that's my chance. <laughs> like a letter under the door. There's an elevator scene where it's almost like a, uh, what is that, glory hole? It's fucking weird. They're drilling holes and sticking body parts through trying to get Kate. And we're treated to the bored billionaire in his office. And that's when we get gag number six, the mousetrap sandwich. That's what we've all been waiting for. Take it away, Chandler. I mean, I think that pretty much... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, these things. Evidently, these things are practical jokers because he just slips a, casually slips a mouse trap in this lady's sandwich. Yeah, because that's the last we see of her. This mouse trap must have just murdered her flat out. Because whenever Clamp comes out of his office to see why she's not responding, she just isn't there. But in her place is this cross-dressing gremlin who is now wearing her uh, her cardigan and banging away on the keyboard going, nah, 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 taking notes. It's fucking... Look, when the gremlins are on the screen, <laughs> it's a good time. Like, if you just Those... cut humans out of this movie down to a 35 to 40 minute, just the gremlins going fucking haywire, I'd be there any day. Those darn gremlins taking our jibs. They <laughs> took our jibs! So this thing attacks Clamp, and he sticks it inside of the paper shredder, which is, I guess, equivocal to a wood chipper, because it fucks this gremlin up. Yeah, this is one of the gnarliest scenes, and I keep using that word, the gnarliest scenes of this movie. It's just disgusting. It's a very appropriate use. (laughs) I'm into it. I appreciate the use of gnarly, it being a 90s film, it being a 90s term. Radical. After that, uh, people come in and find Mr. Clamp covered in this viscous goo that was sprayed out by the creature. Billy references that there was a genetics lab, and he goes, Oh, see, I told you we didn't need a genetics lab. We could have had three shrinks and a plastic surgeon. But no. (laughs) We get a cartoon reference of a worker gremlin that kills everyone in this elevator trying to glory hole Kate, but somehow she survives. It crashes. Yeah. It's like a gremlin's porky. (laughs) Yeah, the elevator just falls out of the sky, and they're all smushed, but but Kate's fine. She is fine, and the two people sitting waiting on the elevator as the door opens goes, Oh, it's okay. We'll catch the next one. There's fucking body parts hanging out of this door. And they're like... It then cuts to a gremlin's review. This is another piece of the film that could have just been cut out, saved us some time, where this critic, much like we are, is tearing the film apart. And the gremlins kill him. I'd rather spend two hours getting a root canal done. 
I think yeah, that's a that's a that's a real person. It's um Leonard something or other. He's like an actual film critic. Leonard Maltin. Oh yeah, last name sounds like a drink. Mm hmm. So the gremlins are now upstairs in the uh, the lab. And they're all drinking these various potions and transforming. We get uh, everything from a, a bat gremlin to a veggie gremlin to a uh, female gremlin and a spider gremlin. And my favorite, Phantom of the Opera gremlin. It just happens so quickly, though. It's so clever. It's just splash. Ah, oh no. Mask. <laughs> just add it. Get splashed in the face with a vial of acid that says, Warning. Do not throw in face. It lets you read that, and then one of the gremlins ugh, throws it in his face. He screams, and immediately has the little masquerade mask that he puts on his face, like it was preempted. Like he's like, "Yo, bro, burn my face. I got this shit. Let's let's make it happen." <laughs> this will be a, a real funny joke. It'll be a funny gag for the the fourth wall. It was a good scene. I can't even say it isn't. Uh, the brain. Gremlin, he gets intelligence. He drinks this brain hormone or whatever. He is voiced by Tony Randall, and this guy knocks it out of the park. The facial movement for this Gremlin in particular is incredible. His eyebrows move in a million different ways. All the little muscles in his cheeks, around his lips, they all accentuate in such a way that it makes it believable when he speaks. The puppetry is really nice with that little guy. Yeah, they knocked it out of the park. I know I've already said that once, but I don't care. It was great. I could totally see some guy in the background, like with a bunch of levers and switches, trying to like mimic mouth movement stuff of the play the audio and whatnot. Yeah, just nailing different actuators, like come on, come on, come on. But whoever did it, kudos to you, friend. It looked amazing. He's got this little spiel where he gets this genetic sunblock and gives it to the bat gremlin this gremlin who now has wings he goes here you go friend you're gonna need this when you go out into the city the city's so nice they named it twice check it out one time won't you <laughs> he gives him the shot and he flies out the window and the genetic sunblock keeps him from dying why he didn't inject himself and all the rest of them with it well if he did that you wouldn't get the batman symbol as he crashed through the wall yeah true the next scene, you get to see the little brain guy. He is on the stock market floor. Just out there, there you see Gremlins yelling, Bye, 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 sell, sell, sell. And he's giving stock advice. And he's got this, Tony Randall's voice is perfect. He goes, We're giving out advice, and what I'm telling my clients is to buy canned food and shotguns. <laughs> just, <laughs> just end of the world stuff. Yeah, prepare. Just, just get ready. As Chandler said earlier, you get a big scene of mayhem and bedlam. The gremlins are just doing whatever the fuck they want. They're just breaking everything in this place, and you get a flasher gremlin. I think he, uh, that's like a return gag from the first one, isn't it? Yeah. He comes running out. He's got his little Paddington Bear trench coat on. He whips it open. He's like, ah! <laughs> and again, he gets punted. I didn't even see that. When did I... You haven't seen Paddington Bear? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's a shame. It's an amazing film. But no, I so, guess there was just so much chaos going on that, like, things like that, I just, it just blended in. I'm pretty sure he's just like a bro from college. He gets so mad he blacks out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're not far off. <laughs> uh, the place starts to catch on fire, and the fire PSA is fucking great. It says, enact the age-old desire for self-preservation and get out of here. <laughs> it's just like, what the fuck? Uh, the bat gremlin attacks Mr. Futterman and then becomes a gargoyle. And you get to see a Lego gremlin. Ugh. Product placement. Yeah, the I movie like really I love starts it. to just drag to where you're like, fucking come on. Yeah. And then we get gag number seven where the villain stripe has tied up gizmo on a railroad track for a model train and of course it runs over and runs him over just like you know a classic snidely whiplash joke but it's so lame it's just like choo choo donk yeah right. 
but Stripe finds it hilarious. Uh, oh yeah, then uh, the film burns away, finds out like he goes into like real life, kind of totally breaking the fourth wall. The gremlins are in like the um, the the projection booth or whatever, and they make a bunch of uh, fucking like hand puppets and whatnot, which is great because the one of Abe Lincoln made me laugh so hard it was ridiculous. Like the hat just like growing out of his hand and whatnot. Fantastic, but at this moment it gets I'm just better. looking back at my wife. Like, what is going on with this? Uh, Again, it was, it was a scene that probably could have been cut down or completely avoided. But again, with the product placement, they piss off somebody in the audience. And again, Eric, I just want you to have this. Oh, that person is fucking Hollywood Hulk Hogan. That's who it is, and he gets well, mad. So, as a child, I remember them. You know, and I can't tell if I'm confusing the first movie, Snow White was the movie that was on the, the movie theater screen, but was that in the first one? That was the first I think one. It is. Yeah. yeah, because they talk about them wanting to watch Snow White, but on the one I watched, it was a nudist volleyball movie. Yeah, then I realized that Hulk Hogan's just, like, chilling out in there. <laughs> like, what the fuck yeah. is he doing? <laughs> what is going on? Trying to crank out some Hulkamania down there. <laughs> oh, for all of all Hulkamaniacs, brother. But he was fucking... Could have been Herman huge and that Pee Wee Herman reference is disgusting good sir <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh. but Hulk calms the gremlins down because he's such a threatening persona that even they can't say no to the Hulkster brother and they turn the film back on <laughs> and it picks up with Vampire Fred grabbing a cameraman who was the uh obnoxious guy that took all the pictures and reports like his dream job was teamed up with that cameraman fellow to get the inside scoop and that uh, that that cameraman was the uh, karate instructor from UHF oh good good spot I didn't even pick that up and also the um, exchange student from 16 candles yep, I think he was in like three movies total long duck dong that's exactly where I knew him from what is it with the 80s and their casual racism with China <laughs> No wonder they hate us. Oh my god. Uh, uh, we are now introduced to the electric gremlin. Uh, like we said earlier, the Phantom of the Opera one. So he's just a blast. We get to see a little bit more of him later. The female gremlin is showed. And she is attacking one of the lackeys to Mr. Clamp. And this thing is jumping all over him. And it's saying things that I can't really make out. But one of them, out of like the four little things that you get to hear it say, it's like, ooh, what a hunk, and it jumps on him trying to kiss him, and then he tries to run away from it, and it jumps onto his leg, and is like, why can't you commit? <laughs> it's yeah. dragging it down the hole. Uh, Christopher Lee gets written out of the film, Samuel L. Jackson style. And not a moment too soon. <laughs> yeah, just the electric gremlin zaps him, kills him. Yeah, he looked bored anyway, so. Yeah, he probably took the roles like I need the money uh, we get <laughs> Spike not Spike damn it Stripe grabs an Uzi 9mm and sprays the room as he's shooting all these bullets we get zany gag number 8 for the cartoons uh, one of the gremlins that you see all the bullets going around he's just standing there and he seems fine and then he starts drinking some, some fluid and it comes out all the bullet holes but he laughs and he's fine you know no big deal Nah, they're just no lactating. Yeah, that's all it is. Uh, it's natural. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look. <laughs> Gizmo gets inspired by watching uh, Rambo, and that's when he hits the weights, Eric. <laughs> He's ready to hit the weights. He starts pumping iron? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. Getting inspired <laughs> by uh, all the muscles in this film. Uh, you get to see as Stripe becomes the spider creature by drinking this formula. It's set to like some rock and heavy metal, like doo -doo 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 -doo. 100% raining blood. Right after that, the dumbest thing in the fucking film happens where Billy catches the electric gremlin in a phone and puts it on hold. And somehow that keeps it there? I don't fucking know. I don't understand logic anymore. Yeah, at this point, I wanted the movie to be over. I was ready. I was like, come on, man, just 
do some shit. Like, just show me the gremlins. I don't fucking care about these people. <laughs> Mr. Clamp airs his End of Civilization PSA. It was pretty Which damn is, funny. It was pretty good, yeah. He, like, had it prepared, and he almost, like, had a tear come to his eye when he watched it. It was just so perfect. Yeah, it was so perfect. He was just happy about it. And, again, I, I, I've... Never been, you know, a big weed person. I don't know how long 420 has been around, but they set the plan to trigger to trap these gremlins at 420. I noticed that. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> that's perfect. So they're changing the clocks to show that it's like nine o'clock outside when it would, in actuality, be only 420 p.m. That way, the gremlins would try to go outside and get killed by the sunlight. Uh, we get a scene with Marla getting tangled in a sticky white substance. Wink. Gross. It's <laughs> capitalism. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Wall Street. Uh, we get a Tree Street elevator where Clamp exits to be the hero and start doing all this shit. At this point... In the movie, people, if you're really still following the plot, you're paying way too much attention. <laughs> no shit. At, at this wait, point, wait. I've already just turned on a Gremlins one, so... Yeah, I mean, you might as well... There's a few bits we're sticking around for. Uh, you get to see Gizmo gearing up for his Rambo showdown where he makes a bow and arrow. And he ties the little red headband on. Fucking adorable. Uh, we get a brand Gremlin interview with Fred... Which is fucking great, where he claims to be, you know, he. I just want to be civilized. That's all we want is to be civilized. We want the civilized thing. Oh my god, that is my favorite part of the whole movie. It's so great. And then there's an annoying gremlin wearing one of those spinner hats, you know, just a little beer spinner hat. Little nerd. Yeah, and he's just annoying the the brain gremlin who's like. We just want the finer things. We want to go out. We want to see the Broadway plays. We want to see the street crime, but I suppose that would be free. And it's the perfect setup and payoff. Is like, we just want to be civilized. Take a look at this fellow. <laughs> just smokes him. <laughs> Skin that smoke wagon and go to work. <laughs> so... We get plan exposition number two, where they explain what they're doing yet again, in case they lost you, you know, because at this point, you're like, fuck, what is even going on in this film? Thank God they reiterated. Uh, <laughs> Billy is captured by the goofy one, and it's a dentist. Uh, Kate rescues Marla after she admits that she failed to seduce Billy while in the Canadian restaurant, and then you get treated to cicada sounds just loud cicada sounds and apparently that's the noise that a spider makes obviously as, yeah as spider stripe comes walking out and what he doesn't last too long i mean they dispatch of him pretty quickly yeah he's got fucking gizmo a, with his uh, rambo arrow just <laughs> takes him out yeah gizbo lights him up knocks him down immediately boom Bow and arrow, flaming arrow, fucking dude goes up just ablaze. This thing is just a lot of fire. And they're holding Gizmo, and they look down at him, and Kate says, What happened to him? And he's got this thousand-yard stare with that little red bandana on. I guess they pushed him too far. And whenever they said that, it zooms in slowly on his face, and his eyes just look off. To the side. It, There's, and it's oh, great. It, it's great because they're like illuminated by the fire in the background. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. If there were just the scenes about these fucking animals and not these people that I didn't give a shit about. So you're telling me if we cut out the right bits, this could be like a 30 minute war drama? <laughs> yes. And it would be amazing. It would be like a comical war yeah. drama. Now, I'll be honest with you. Like, what I was what I was just thinking through this whole thing is like, this would make a whole lot more sense as just like a 30 minute episode of Animaniacs. Yes. There you go. Yeah, this whole thing was wacko, so yeah, I believe that. Yakko and Dot. <laughs> but instead, we have to sit through this for an hour and 40 minutes. It's such so... a dredge. <laughs> yes. I remember loving, and I still loved it. 
the scene came up with the New York, New York musical number. The musical number that... Where did those costumes come from? Does it matter, sir? Because when this shit started, I was like, I remember this. I fucking love it. And one of the characters even goes, these guys aren't bad. And they're fucking right. Okay, <laughs> these guys aren't bad. They're killing it. At the end of the song, they're all bending over and they make a pattern that has the female gremlin's face on it. Where they got this shit, I don't know. But then the centerpiece raises out in the middle of the eye and the female gremlin comes out since she's the star and she's all... <laughs> Ooh, oh. It cuts to this other section of gremlins and these guys are over there preparing for war. You see these giant crates with bombs, hand grenades, ammunition. You see a picture of the Statue of Liberty with a circle with a stripe through it, you know, basically like, oh, we're going to get this, and then it pans over and they have just every type of firearm you can think of. Guns, guns, guns! Exactly! You know, there's there's sure to be a CAC, Cobra Assault Cannon, in there somewhere. <laughs> would, like, would the audience be mad if this, like, just turned into, like, a RoboCop 2 review just right now? Or, or they have they gotten this far to notice? <laughs> yeah, they've probably already given up. Like, fuck this movie. Uh, I, like I said, I remember loving this movie. And when I discussed it with Eric, we were both very excited for this. But going back and watching it and having to take notes, fuck this movie in the human aspect. Yeah, I thought I had watched the first one, but it was the second one. And that's what I had remembered. And I agree, going back and watching this, I was just like, what in the fuck? What is this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's just a big mess. Uh, their plan goes to shit. They end up having to come up with some convoluted plan where they spray water on them and zap them with the fucking electric zombie. Or not electric zombie, the electric gremlin that they had on hold. It's stupid. You get, it's pretty dumb. Yeah, you get... A little what a world, what a world reference. It's just, it's not. Ah, it was so fun, and then they just wrapped it up so quick with some nonsense. It's it's kind of movie where they're like, okay, we have all these ideas. Which one do we use? And they're like, yes, <laughs> yeah. And then even after the you know the main wrap up, you get like this really awkward lady gremlin consensual sex scene. It's fucking weird. It's it's like if I walked into the editing room for this movie, the guy's just like literally beating a dead horse. <laughs> yes. You know, if you got a kid, your kid's probably going to like it because they can sit through some schlock. If you're an adult and you remember loving this movie, just remember loving it. You don't. You really don't. <laughs> I mean, this movie is funny, but it's not fun. It... Yeah, okay. It's definitely got some parts in it that I laughed at. A lot yeah, of really exactly. clever things, but I don't want to sit through it again. Fuck this movie, and there's a lot of fuck this movie in there where they just need to get all this plot across that no one gives a shit about. I don't even think they gave a shit about it. I'm pretty sure they just greenlit a sequel, and no one wanted to make it, but then they had to make it, and this is what happened. Yeah, the movie could have been this. Ten minutes introducing how Gizmo got into the building, yada yada yada. It all could have worked the same way. Introduce, you know, the characters that need to be introduced. Turn the fucking gremlins loose in the building. Show us the res bleh, bleh. show us the relationship between Stripe, Gizmo, and that's it. Just show us that. I mean, at this point, I would be fine with just getting Hulk Hogan wet and just like a bunch of brothers popping out. Oh shit! Just he's like, oh man, you know, he's doing that thing where he hulks up and he shakes, but out of his back, you just hear brother, 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 brother. brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. They all start off as like little mustaches, little handlebar mustaches. Yes, it's just little walking mustaches, and then they have to like get some roids. <laughs> they get roids at midnight. They fucking just start to go. <laughs> yeah, the evil one's got to be Hollywood. He's over there, like, let me tell you something, brother. NWO is gonna run wild. <laughs> well, that was a movie. Uh, if you guys want to listen to any more, be sure to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Beards Brewscast, and uh, be sure to like us on our Facebook page as well. Yeah, buddy. All those links should be down there in the description. Make sure you smash that like button. Thanks for listening. Da, 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 da.
Da 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 da